<laughs> Greetings. I hope you're all well. Um, today I want to encourage you in Christ. I want to encourage you in the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you in the finished work of the cross, the power of the blood of Jesus, <laughs> the Father love of God. So all things that Jesus earned for us on the cross, just that love and grace and our righteousness. And I want to encourage you in those things. But I also want to start encouraging you in to move in the gifts of the Spirit. And they are a grace from God. So today we're going to look um, at the gift of prophecy and how we are called in the new covenant to operate in the gift of prophecy. Yes, the gift of prophecy is for today. But it may not be what you think it is. It may not be what religion has taught you um, that it was. Prophecy is an amazing, wonderful gift of God, wonderful grace of God to build up the church, to strengthen each other. So I want to just share that today. I want to share a little bit about how God used that in my life, how there have been times when he's used me prophetically to really strengthen people and i want to just say just like he can use me he can use you so that's what this uh, series this next series is, is going to start um, now with a an understanding of prophecy of new covenant prophecy new testament prophecy by the holy spirit and how we use that to strengthen each other and strengthen the church it's one of the gifts that is so, so important for today. We are called to be a prophetic voice in the nations. And the gift of prophecy is given to all those who are born again, spirit-filled, baptized in the spirit. It's, it's available to each one of us as the spirit, as and when the spirit determines. So the proof text that we're going to look at is um, 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14. They all relate. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is about the gifts of the spirit, the various gifts of the spirit or graces of the spirit remember gifts or that word charis means grace it means a free gift unearned by you and prophecy is one of those gifts of the spirit talks to, talked about in uh, 1 corinthians 12. 1 corinthians 13 is a beautiful chapter on love huh. character of god god is love and it shows his character what love is but when we move into 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says this. It says, follow the way of love. Follow the way of love. And eagerly desire the spiritual gifts. Especially the gift of prophecy. <laughs> wow. Man, what a revelation that is. Follow the way of love. <laughs> you see, the gift of prophecy is one of the primary ways that the Spirit and us love on other people it is amazing the gift of prophecy properly used and properly tested is one of the ways we strengthen encourage and love agape unconditionally love people you see follow the word we believe the word of god amen we believe the word of god and the word of god says follow the way of love in other words move in the gifts especially the gift of prophecy see jesus said a new commandment i give to you that you love one another and sometimes we say well how do we how do we do that well here's an answer prophesy over people <laughs> wow and i'll tell you prophecy just releases also joy upon people because they start to understand god's purposes god's encouragement it's 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 an amazing amazing gift and we all need to earnestly desire this gift of prophecy we can all prophesy if you filled with the holy spirit you see because it's actually not you it's jesus it's christ in you the hope of glory it's christ who lives in you by the holy spirit that actually is the prophetic voice because it said jesus was a prophet he was more than a prophet we know he was the son of god and the messiah but we also see jesus moving in prophecy you know with the woman at the well John chapter 4, it, it says that he, he had words of knowledge, which again, a form of prophecy. We're going to look into that over the next few weeks. He knew stuff about this woman you could not have possibly known in the natural. And she said, wow, sir, I see you are a prophet. 
And then Jesus went on to speak into her life and that just empowered her. Just so as he spoke prophetically over her, something stirred in her spirit and she went back and she literally led her whole town to the Lord. See, that's the power of prophecy. And the same Jesus, who is the son of God, who is a third person of the Trinity, but who is a prophet, lives in us. So when we prophesy, we don't prophesy out of our own ability. We prophesy because Christ in us is wanting to encourage, strengthen, and build up the church. That's the spirit of prophecy is Jesus. Prophecy always draws people into Jesus. New Testament prophecy. <laughs> it's so good, I'm telling you. It's so wonderful. See, because prophecy is a form of blessing. In its simplest form, prophecy is just simply blessing people, speaking God's grace over people. And again, just to remind you, God's grace is undeserved, unmerited favor, blessing, and empowerment in Jesus by the Holy Spirit. So prophecy, the gift of prophecy, comes when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, just he said, wait. And I will send the Holy Spirit when he comes. Power will come upon you. And, and John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And he says, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You see, there's a fire. There's a, there's a fiery zeal about wanting to encourage and strengthen and build up the church. And prophecy is love. So when you done in its purest form it's love it's not condemnation it's not guilt there's a difference by the way between the old covenant pro prophets and new covenant prophecy and prophets because the covenant changed the agreement changed under the law the old covenant prophets prophesied doom and gloom and judgment because that's what the law brought about they were fulfilling the law that was their role but the old testament prophets ceased with John the Baptist and it says there was no one greater amongst the prophets than John the Baptist but the least in the kingdom of God that's you and me is greater than he so do not desire to be Old Testament prophets see there's a lot of people walking around in the church calling themselves prophets but they prophesy doom and gloom they they are in the ministry of the law and as we say to Corinthians Chapter 5 says the ministry of the law is death and condemnation. But we are not old covenant prophets. We don't prophesy doom and gloom. We're not there to point out people's sins and to bring them into condemnation, which is what the law was there for. We are new covenant prophets. And the purpose of prophecy in the new covenant is to encourage, strengthen and build up the body of Christ. Yes, there are times when we warn people, when we may give people a warning. But actually, it's, it's a, there's a positive stance to new covenant prophecy in Jesus Christ because it's about building up and strengthening. It's the kindness of God that leads to repentance. You see, when people understand the call on their life, when that call is prophesied over them, and when it relates and confirms what's already happening in their heart, Man, they just, they just want to turn away from, from evil. They want to turn away from sinful ways. Repentance. A change of mind that leads to a change of action and holiness. So it's edification and the building up and the um, strengthening of our identity in Christ as sons and children of God that actually is the purpose of prophecy and then that leads to a change of lifestyle. <laughs> it's such good news. It's amazing. I had prophecies over me. I remember oh, 30 years ago, it was prophesied over me, Gary, one day you're going you're gonna to be building up young people. Your main ministry is going to be with young people. And that has actually come into pass. It's always been this tendency in me to strengthen and build up and edify young people. And even now, at this late stage of my life, that's starting to happen. Now, prophecy is coming true. Sometimes prophecy takes many years to come true. But it says in the scriptures, don't despise prophecy. Take hold of the prophecy. Don't despise prophecy. See, there's, in the 1990s, they, there was this big shift of the spirit and prophecy started coming to the fore. People started prophesying. And sadly, 
many of us, including myself, were quite immature in the understanding of prophecy, and it led to a lot of hurt. It led to a lot of people, these so-called prophets, controlling other people, giving them directional stuff without being tested, and it led to a lot of hurt. I want to just break that hurt now, and if you've been prophesied over right now in the name of Jesus, I just break any hurt of, of false prophecy over you. Set you free from that. And just call you back to prophesy and to receive prophecy in a godly way. So New Testament prophecy, as it talks about in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, is for the edification and building up of the church. And the church is you and me, believers in Christ. It's not there to preach condemnation and judgment. So that's the gift of prophecy. And that gift of prophecy is available to all by the Spirit. We are not all prophets, but we can all prophesy as and when the Spirit enables us. So I love prophesying. And I love encouraging people. And sometimes God gives me stuff. I mean, it's just, just amazing. You know, I had a, um, just to give you an example, I had a young man who's been struggling with some stuff. Just right now, I received an email from him saying, um, because the Lord, I said to the Lord, like, Lord, what do you want? How do you want me to minister to this young man? This young man was in a faraway country. But the Lord said to me, get him, tell him to watch these videos that you've put up on YouTube. And he's going to experience deliverance. And the Lord told me there was some freedom coming from religiosity and legalism. And as he listened in the joy of the Lord, because let me tell you, the joy of the Lord is offensive um, to, to the religious spirit. And, and I felt the Lord saying, as he listens to this stuff, so there's going to be freedom. And I just got an email now. So that was like a prophetic insight into, into what was going on to someone I've never even spoken to. It was just done by email. <laughs> he just sent me a, a video. I'm sorry, an email saying, as he was listening he realized that there had been legalism in his life and just spontaneously he started undergoing some deliverance from religious spirits and legalism and the joy of the Lord came upon him. <laughs> See, that was prophetic insight. It was something, and I have a sense for that young man that he's going to prophetically, and, and you know who you are, and just prophesy that over you, that prophetically you're going to bring people into freedom from religiosity and from witchcraft. You see, that's what the, the, the gift of prophecy is about. It's, Lord, what do I do? How, what are you saying for this person? How do I bless this person? How do I love this person? See, it's all about love. Eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy, to love one another. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. So there are times when we give guidance to people. Okay, but again... One has to be careful because we're not there to control and manipulate people. Prophecy is there to already confirm the things people are sensing in their heart. And like with any prophecy, and I'm going to share how to prophesy over the next few weeks and some keys to that and how to practice. But let me just say, any prophecy you get given, you need to test. You need to test it against the things God has already been saying to you because you hear God's voice. The, 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 the purpose of prophecy is to, is to strengthen you in what God's already calling you to. You have to take prophecy and test it with those who you're accountable to. And we all need to be accountable to others. You need to test it against the word of God. Okay, so all prophecy is tested. We do not go to prophetic people instead of going to God. Okay, let me just say that. They are not mediators between man and God. That was the old covenant. In the old covenant, priests and prophets were mediators between man and God. But in the new covenant, Jesus is the one mediator between man and God, between us and God, by his spirit living in us. So the purpose of prophecy okay, is not for prophets to hear God for us but actually to already confirm what we're hearing and what we've been seeking in the Lord. So we need to, to have that lifestyle of hearing God for ourselves, but also be open to the prophetic to confirm 
what we're already suspecting in our hearts, within our being. So it needs to be tested. Any prophecies you get, give them, test them. Go, no, no prophecy is going to go against the word of God, against the scriptures, against new covenant scriptures. If it does, discard it. So the question is, is also who can prophesy? Well, actually we can all prophesy. Every single person who's born again and been baptized in the Spirit can prophesy at certain times in certain places. So it says, for instance, that Stephen had daughters, a whole bunch of daughters that prophesied. <laughs> and as we know, Jesus prophesied. It said there was a, a prophet called Agabus. He prophesied. And again, in the context of um, 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the whole body of Christ being able to operate in the gift of prophecy. You know, when I'm when I'm with somebody and they and they very prophetic, I must admit, I don't prophesy that much. It's funny. It's like the spirits like working through them. So like I step back. But when sometimes when I'm by myself or I'm in a group where there's not a lot of prophesy, prophesying taking place, suddenly I feel that I need to prophesy and stuff just comes out. So God, the Spirit gives this to us as, as and when he determines, but we can all draw that toolbox of, of the gifts of the Spirit. The toolbox of love, the toolbox of, of ministry is there for us as the body of Christ. So we can all prophesy. And uh, we know that in in the in, um, book of Acts, it says, you know, when the Spirit was poured out, it says, this is what the prophet Joel was talking about. And he goes on and young men and uh, will prophesy and young women and old men will dream dreams. Well, I dream dreams and I prophesy because of my age, you see. <laughs> but it's, it's a gift for all people who are born again in the spirit. So we need to eagerly desire these gifts. We need to move in these gifts because prophecy is like a rima word from God. It's a now word of God. And often just taking a scripture and speaking over, over someone as a rima now word is a form of prophecy you know the the, the agabus it, in the book of Acts talks about agabus he foretold that there was going to be a famine in the land he foretold that saul was going to be bound and 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 taken before the sanhedrin so there is an element of foreseeing in prophecy you know a lot of people don't like that they say oh yeah well it's not fortune telling well that's right it's not fortune telling but as you move stronger and stronger in prophecy, there is a sense of what the future holds. That's, that's prophetic. But at its, at its basic form, prophecy in the new covenant is encouraging and strengthening people. It's a gift of the Spirit. So it's not fortune telling. It's not acting as a mediator between man and God. It's not there to control people. It's not extra biblical. In other words... You know, because we prophesy, it doesn't get added on to Scripture. <laughs> that ceased with the Old Testament prophets. It's not there to make people dependent on you or me as a prophetic voice. It's there to strengthen, encourage, and build up. In Ephesians 4.8, it talks about the grace, the grace of God, and it goes on in that chapter in Ephesians to talk about the offices of apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, pastor. So clearly, in the old, in the in the new covenant, there is an office or a position, in a sense, or a, an anointing, special anointing of authority that comes on prophets. And my experience is they're far and few between. We can all prophesy, but we're not all prophets. But like a prophet, in a sense, would be someone who moves in at a national level and has great authority. And again, we'll talk about that some other time. So don't muddle that up. I'm not saying you and me are prophets. I'm saying we can prophesy. And our prophecy is to draw people into deeper intimacy with Jesus, to strengthen them in their identity as children of God. So just to encourage you, listen to this series. Let's get it out there because I, we need to be prophetic. You know, the world out there is looking for a prophetic voice. We need to be prophetic on, on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. We need to be a prophetic voice. And by the way, if you like this, if you like this teaching, 
Please share it with your friends. Please click the button in the bottom right hand corner, subscribe. Click the notification, there's a little bell next to subscribe so you get notifications of when I post this stuff. The purpose of these videos is to equip the church, to strengthen the church. You know, I've prophesied, I'll give you, I'll give you one great little thing that happened to me many years ago. I was um, in a, a new wine meeting, um, was an organization I used to minister with, and this big guy came up, um, big farmer from the free state in South Africa and he stood before me and he said prophesy <laughs> and I'm like oh I was a fairly new Christian any case as I was prophet like a standing there praying for him I had this picture of an orange a bag of oranges being squeezed and this might sound crazy but you see prophecy prophesying over people is a faith thing we don't know whether it's right or whether it's wrong we just trust in god we speak out loving loving things we don't speak out harmful things so i said to the guy listen i don't know what this means so but i just get this picture this bag of oranges and god's taking and squeezing these oranges and juice is running out and i see that juice many people drinking that juice and being very happy and as i'm as i'm sharing this in prayer he's got his eyes closed i'm sharing this is a picture because you know, one of the ways we prophesy is like, what do you see? And I just saw this kind of picture. And I spoke it over him in faith. And as I did that, he started crying his eyes out. And he got touched, so touched by the Holy Spirit. And he said, how did you know those things? And I said, well, I don't know anything. What are you talking about? He said, you know, I'm an orange farmer <laughs> in the free state. on the, I think the banks of the Orange River. And he says, my main business is providing oranges for juice. And, and I just know that God knows me and I'm encouraged and strengthened and I'm going to go and feed the people the living word of God. That's prophecy. So Holy Spirit, I even pray now over each and every person that you would stir up within each heart here <laughs> the joy of the Lord and the desire for the gift of prophecy that the church may be strengthened <laughs> and that we may love on people in Jesus' name. Bless you, and may the joy of the Lord be your strength. Jesus has done it all for us on the cross. We are righteous. We are holy. We are perfected in Christ. And we work in that out day by day. So go forth and prophesy. In the name of Jesus, amen.